All the cool kids are here. Awesome, so we are here for Come Wi-Fi Me, Wi-Fi and other RF surveillance. Uh, Alyssa is going to present. If you have questions for the Q&A portion, please feel free if you are on the Discord to throw those in that chat and we'll get those at the end. Uh, fun fact about Alyssa, they are sad they missed their dog, so feel free to give them hugs. Just kidding, go team, Alyssa. Yay. Okay, hi, can you hear me okay? It's wobbly up here, go on wobbly. Okay, hi, I'm Alyssa. Um, I know cold opens are more cool than me introducing myself, but I feel like you should get to know me because you'll find out a little bit about me during this talk. So um, let, me, let me say hi. I'm a solutions architect at Bishop Box. Um, we're an offensive security company, really cool. Um, if you care, Google it. I'm an internet enthusiast. Um, I got a computer when I was three. Does anyone remember those gateways that were like cow print? Yeah, that was my first computer. Um, I dropped out of my PhD. I was at Purdue from my undergrad to PhD. Um, I did a lot while I was there. After 10 years, I got sick of it, so I left. Um, the other things I'm going to mention a little bit later on, um, actually the next is on this slide. So I am super blessed. I get to mentor people through their Security Plus exam um, and helping them find their first job. And uh, two of my students just graduated. <laughs> yeah, clap for them. OK, so I hope they're watching right now. They said they would. Um, and if you are interested, I know everyone's looking for a job right now, but these two are super special. So if you uh, have positions open or are curious, hit me up. This is my email. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, you need my email to like add me on LinkedIn. So here it is. Um, they're really cool. Think about it. Okay, so I had some questions while writing this talk um, or what prompted me to write it in the first place. And I hope that we're able to answer all of these today. Uh, we'll see if we you know, uh, are able to do that, but I hope that you guys have a lot of questions too, so feel free to put them in the Discord. I have time at the end of this talk to question and answer and whatnot, so if you don't see your question on the screen, just let me know. Um, okay, so I want to talk about pure freaking magic. Uh, that's Wi-Fi to me. So what is RF? If you came to this talk and didn't know what RF stood for, like, thank you. Like, that's a big jump. Uh, but if you don't know, it stands for radio frequencies. They're part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, they're before the phase of visible light. I'll show you that on the next slide of, of where we're talking about. Um, there's unintentional radio frequencies that occur in nature, um, and by nature I mean the wild, like not, not like trees, I mean your house. Um, and then intentional, which is why we're all here and we're able to even do this and even talk on the internet um, through the power and magic of Wi-Fi. So um, here are what some radio frequencies look like. It's really important to note that the ones we're talking about are in the non-ionizing spectrum. We're going to get to that. Um, obviously, things like x-rays and um, like sun radiation are, are way down on the, on the spectrum. Um, one thing to note, the lower the frequency, the longer the range, and the higher the frequency, the shorter the range. That's why 2.4 gigahertz has a longer range than 5, right? Um, so what we have here on the, the left is the longer range devices, and then we have all the way up to ionizing radiation, which are like x-rays. Here's what we were talking about. These are the frequency spectrum bands. It's really important to keep a few things in mind, the very low frequency and the um, low frequency. We'll talk about those um, in the books that I'm going to bring up. So there are lots of types of RF. The ones on the left are the most common, the ones that we're going to talk about today, but there are others. You'll notice some of these overlap. Um, you'll notice that microwave, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi are on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. This is why if you're microwaving something and you have like a really cheap one and you're wearing Bluetooth headphones, your headphones will like buzz and crack out um, because it's uh, getting interference from the microwave. Um, another thing that they have in common is the uh, high frequency RFID and the NFC are both on that 13.56 megahertz um, wavelength. So um, let's talk about those two actually next. So these are, besides Wi-Fi, uh, so RF that I really like, 
Uh, we have that low, high, and ultra high frequency RFID. We'll get to the purposes of those here in a second. But um, I really like NFC. And uh, this is a globally available unlicensed radio frequency band that you can do whatever with. Um, you guys have tap to pay, right? Some of you, okay. Um, I actually am pro tap to pay. And you're like, what? Yeah, hold on to that. Um, smart tags, access control, inventory list, uh, 3D printed cacti, they're all made with NFC. Um, and NFC stands for near field connection. What is near field? About four centimeters. Um, why do I like these two so much? I am a biohacker, hi, hello. Um, I'm also terrified of needles. How that happens at the same time, I have no clue for you. Um, but this is the type of tag that I have in my hand. There are more advanced tags now, like the next chip, but this is the one that I have. The ISO 1444-3A is a very common antenna type. It's the kind that you'll see on like Amazon, NFC tags and whatnot. Um, I want to point out something really quick. If you want to get a chip and you are like, oh my gosh, I want to be a biohacker too, I am very biased towards the person on the screen that I have the QR code for. Um, so if you trust my opinion, that's cool. I can't pretend I'm unbiased. This is like my favorite person in the whole world. So a um, little bias there, but if you are looking for an installer, I got one for you. What can't the chip do? So what people think uh, you could do a lot with it and you can't. It's a limited chip, the ID is set. Um, with certain types of NFC, the IDs rotate for authentication and encryption. We'll get to that. Um, and you can't, because of that, you can't make payments with it. So you can't do that and it's really important. It's, this comes directly from the Dangerous Things website, this little screenshot here. Chip implants cannot be used for GPS or tracking. It's legit. First off, um, it's near field connection. So with under your skin, with the interference of flesh, it is right on your hand. If my adversary is holding my hand, I have another problem. Um, so it's pretty obvious. I'm not worried about tracking. That's not what these chips can do. So when it comes to can NFC surveil you? No, not really. However, RFID is a little complicated. Not so much in the wild. There's not like RFID readers just everywhere um, at like parks or anything. But when we're talking about shipping, storage facilities, stores, universities, campuses, hospitals, yes, you can, you can be tracked via RFID. And we'll get into that in the next slide a little bit. There are range limitations of this and most RFID is passive. The kind of RFID in your hand does not have any sort of power, right? Um, or the, the kind that are your um, like fob type, not your car fob, those are active. Actually, I'll just skip to that. Those are active. Um, car fobs, who, who like unlocks their car with the fob? You all do? Okay. I don't right now only because mine is broken. I'm not gonna pretend to be like, ooh, I'm so secure, mine's just broken. Um, so because it's a lower frequency, the range is about 100 feet. The lower the frequency, the longer the length, right? Um, few readers are required for tracking. There's not many involved. Um, and then the battery does run out, so it has a limited lifespan. Passive RFID is ar around one to five meters. Um, in my experience, it's much less uh, with passive RFID tags. I've not ever been able to read, even with a high power reader, a NFC tag five meters away. However, a meter away, two meters away, very possible. Um, you do require a large number of readers for tracking, um, so there's that limitation as well. Okay, it's my opinion that you should worry about badge cloning over tracking. It's really hard to track distance and length, like a GPS style, you can't really do that with RFID. So don't worry about that. Who gave you the card, chip, or fob in the first place is more important. Think about it this way, if you have a fob that unlocks your apartment, or maybe a door or for your work. Do you own that fob? No, you do not. It is property of who gave it to you. Raise your hand if you think the issuer of your RFID fob shouldn't track its location. I disagree with you. And we'll get to why uh, when I talk about it. But um, <laughs> I, I, I disagree. Not for a privacy perspective, but for the fact that that's just not how RF, RF works. Um, in a supply chain and inventory setting, we have a lot of different applications for RFID. The one that I found pretty interesting was the pallet tags. I didn't know pallets were individually tagged for location. Thought that was pretty cool. 
Um, but there are a lot of different applications and these items can be found uh, moving within buildings. You can find locations, data about them, make sure they're not stolen, all sorts of applications. This question I think is the one that everyone really came for. Um, probably why you're interested, can Wi-Fi be used to spy on you? Now, um, there are two parts to this talk, and the reason why I wrote the second part is because I didn't want to sound like I'm a fear monger right now. Um, but the answer is, yeah, yeah, it can. Um, Wi-Fi can be used to track your location, your behavior at said locations. Wi-Fi can, quote, see through walls. I have some pictures to explain that. And besides the ability to war drive and find Wi-Fi around you, there's no true detection for someone using Wi-Fi to track you. Um, so it, the detection is not available for most situations. There is specific hardware that can help you. Um, and if you want to find those, uh, you take a good Google, make your own. Um, but yeah, your receiver could be what is tracked. And think cell phone, iPad, anything with a wireless connection. Or you. So, oh, and by the way, I am not trying to QR fish you. I, I'm not saying the word that you all are thinking that sounds like moist. Um, I'm not doing that. Um, but if you're interested and you don't trust my QR codes, just Google the title. I'm just trying to be convenient for you. This is a study out of MIT where they were doing um, this kind of what looks like heat map sort of deal with RF through a wall. And the assertions that the researchers came to is that you can tell who is behind the wall, uh, what their handwriting is in the air, um, and um, how a person behind the wall is moving. So the moving part is super interesting. Your gait is a really strong identifier of who you are, how you walk. Um, everyone has a very unique walk. And if you're able to determine how someone is walking, you maybe have like camera images of them walking where you can see it, it is pretty identifiable. Now this one didn't scare me so much. This one did. Um, it's much more accurate to a human shape. Um, I think the researchers in this picture are a little privileged to have their bodies all conform to the same shape and say that it is more, an, 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 I can't say this word, anonymizing, um, whereas people of different heights, gates, sizes, and shapes all would look different on, on this kind of uh, camera-like image. Um, but the researchers actually say that this is a great use for privacy. Um, if we replace RGB cameras with this type of technology, um, there's a lot more privacy for the individuals being on screen. Uh, your face is not being saved, right? So like images of you are not being saved somewhere else for someone else to use. Um, so they actually believe this is a really good privacy application. Uh, I think it's pretty interesting. The next part we have to talk about is Wi-Fi positioning systems. Um, this is uh, kind of what you think it sounds like. If you are in some areas that have GDPR compliance, you actually are supposed to be notified that Wi-Fi positioning systems are in use. Um, here, we don't have to. And if you've been to like Walmart, Kroger, Target, Kmart, is Kmart even open still? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, you've already been in a place with Wi-Fi positioning systems. Um, in healthcare applications, it's really good for tracking medical equipment, and it can also be used as a real-time location system. One of the ways to track people is with the Received Signal Strength Indicator, or SSI. Most manufacturers set their scale from 1 to 100, with 30 being a great quality signal, sorry, negative 30 decibels. Um, and then um, 90 decibels is basically unusable. Your device will determine what decibel threshold to show you a connection at, but there's actually way more connections around you than what your device is showing you. So this is a couple different ways that we can do that Wi-Fi positioning. The one I just talked about is multilateration. I said the word Arvin. Wow, I can't say that word, guys. Um, multilateration, very similar to how you think your cell phone is able to multilaterate um, and find your location, very similar. We have angle of arrival and time of flight. The illustration here is for time of flight. Um, it, it inserts a space in between broadcasting and then uses that space to measure the distance of receiving that information back. So that T response is what we're looking for. And its location accuracy is supposed to be less than 10 meters. I've seen it work to feet. It really depends on the hardware, the interference, the walls, where you are, lots of different mitigating factors. So um, like I said, you've been in locations like this before. 
It's not a conspiracy, it's a commercial product by Cisco. Uh, there are a lot of other people who do it, I'm just picking on Cisco. Um, one thing to know is when you are in this location with uh, like something like Cisco Spaces, they are storing information about your device and holding it. Um, and you're like, okay, Alyssa, I won't connect to the Wi-Fi. No, like your phone is screaming, hey, what Wi-Fi is around me? Can I connect to you? Who are you? All the time. It's looking for your home connections, your saved networks. It is constantly screaming about Wi-Fi all the time, and we can detect that. We can, we can look and store that information, and uh, that's exactly what happened to this guy. Um, so Dungans is not our hero here, okay? I'm not gonna be like, look at this guy for privacy. Let me tell you what this kid did, okay? He went to a dorm room of some students and pretended to be a cop. And uh, then he, he knocked on the door, he's like pretending to be this police officer, and um, he he's, takes marijuana and money from the other students. And so the police were able to, you know, like determine, okay, we know it's a male and a couple other factors. And they were trying to find out who was there. So it looked like, according to the access point in the room, there were about 80 to 90 connections around. They were able to filter out the floors, so like people above and below the room, filter all them out, and they found five anomalous devices at night in an all men's dorm. What they found of the five was that two of them were women. Does anyone see a problem with that? Like the privacy implication, like it, it, it's really unsettling to me that they were like, oh yeah, there are two women in all men's dorm at night, we can exclude them. I don't really, if, if that was me, I wouldn't want people to know where I was. Um, turn off your Wi-Fi. So anyway, the ACLU was fighting this under the Fourth Amendment, saying that a person's Wi-Fi connection, or not even the connection, the broadcasting of the ability to connect is a privacy of life and therefore deserving protection. Raise your hand if you believe that. I'm s okay, no, it keep, people are raising it and you're disappointing me. I liked it better when you kept your hand down. No. I just explained how the broadcasting works, right? If you are gonna commit crime, turn off your Wi-Fi, turn off your Bluetooth, <laughs> okay? Just, yeah, that's not legal advice, thank you for saying that, um, but it is Alyssa's personal advice, so. Um, speaking of Bluetooth, we do this one on purpose. Right now, can you find my tile? I have a tile in here. I don't care if you say, oh, Alyssa, I'm gonna find you later. If you're in range of me, again, different threat matrix, okay? Um, most rotate their Mac, uh, MAC addresses automatically. Um, we'll talk about who does. And then that location accuracy is much more <laughs> finite. Um, hidden air tags have been a privacy problem for years. IOS is supposed to tell you if there's an air tag around you following you that is not registered to you. Um, so it's supposed to help mitigate that risk. Uh, but it is what it is. Something that is out of scope that I don't care to talk about is a Stingray. It's a cellular device for surveillance. It's a surveillance device. It surveils you. Okay? Um, we'll get to more cellular concerns, um, specifically 5G. I am not ignoring you all or checking my messages. If you've been to one of my talks before, I think you know what's happening. Um, so, um, anyone here fans of Wiggle? I will. T Woo! Okay, Zach, you're on the list. Um, who is? We have lots of Cactus Con here. What's happening, guys? I'm looking at the Wi Fi and Bluetooth of who's around. Um, thank you, Chelsea, for turning off your connections. Thank you for learning from. Last year, um, we have Mike. Is there a mic in the room that has this shit on? <laughs> okay, no. All right. So, um, I really love Wiggle. It'll help you determine um, a couple of things. We'll get to that next slide. It's really fun. It's war driving. If you're like, oh, I can track people. No, you cannot. That's not how it works. Um, it's really fun. So, um, I am a big 3D printing fan. I really like it. Um, in a couple of my past talks, like at GERCON and a couple others, I've given out little trinkets of 3D printing that I have made. Um, I dare you, strongly, if you disagree with me that NFC can't be used to track you, to take one of my little cacti. Um, I have flat cap little NFC tags and I have cacti up here. Arvin, can you put your hand up real quick? See where he is? 
Okay, um, I don't want to disturb the speaker after me, so and I don't care if you try to disturb me during my talk. So if you would like an NFC cactus, um, please take one. One of the cacti and one of the flat ones has a golden ticket on it with an email address and a code to get a prize from me if you read it. So uh, feel free to come up and get them now or later during the talk, just not after the talk. I will leave and go in the hallway. If you want to get one from me there, fine, but I do want to respect the next speaker. So um, pro prove me wrong, okay? So again, this is what Wiggle looked like. Um, we could see here, this was taken on a Southwest flight. So there's no GPS, that's why there's no sync there. But we have Allison and Hunter, or D Hunter's laptop. Um, we have some information about the connections, and then we see that Samsung Electronics, that's because we have the organizational ID telling us that first part of the MAC address, what type of hardware it is. All right, I am making great time. I'm super proud of myself now. I was worried there for a second. Um, so I, I kind of have been saying, you know, like Wi-Fi can be used to track you, turn your shit off, all sorts of privacy problems. Um, but I want to debunk a couple of things and really kind of address this space a little bit. So let's talk about 5G. I'll wait for the groan. Um, so is 5G harmful to you and your privacy, specifically to you? Now, when I was Googling this issue and I was looking for, again, is it a commercial product or a conspiracy theory? Here, it's both. Um, we have these silly little stickers. Now, there was an engineer at Purdue University who I actually super respected, who kept one of these stickers on her phone. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow was selling them or something like that. Um, and apparently these stickers are supposed to reduce the amount of radiation coming from your phone. Um, specifically, the electromagnetic fields causing thermal uh, damage that caused, is caused by radiation. So um, who is Deborah Davis? You can't see the image really well at the bottom here, um, but when I share my slides, you can see them. This product is endorsed by her. Um, so I was like, who is this person? I went down this rabbit hole of like figuring out who this 5G lady was. Um, so she's the founder and president of the Environmental Health Trust. She's one of the leaders of Anti-5G and she has filed many lawsuits against the FCC. Let's dig deeper and discover a little bit more about the Environmental Health Trust. They believe non-ionizing radiation is harmful. Do you remember when I said like, oh look over here, we're all in this happy joyful land? Um, they believe that's actually harmful. Um, believing that the higher the frequency, the higher the harm. And that makes sense, right? Like, the color purple is not gonna hurt you. Super ultraviolet light is, is gonna cause a problem. Um, they claim it damages RNA. Uh, we'll talk about SAR, but SAR is the specific absorption rate. If its allowance is too high, it can hurt you. They say that the allowance that the FCC gives of SAR ratings for devices um, is too high and not safe. So some things I found when looking up this organization, um, they are a 501c3, so they have to divulge their taxes. But other than that, they have not released any financial statements. What I found interesting was in 2018, we weren't really talking about 5G that much, like it wasn't that big of a concern. And during that year, in 2023, they netted an income of less than $300. However, in 2020, their total revenue was about half a million. And this is definitely because they're receiving money through the fear mongering of 5G. Um, so I looked in a little further, they spend one thing a year. They hold on to all their money and they spend one thing a year and that's on their executive director. Now, am I saying there's financial weirdness going on here? Not really. It's not that much money, half a million dollars. Um, and spending $64,000 a year isn't too much um, on, on that. So I'm not saying there's a big monetary conspiracy. What I'm saying is who is on the leadership board of this organization, right? What do they believe? So I looked her up and she's one of these. 5G is actually a military technology that affects your brain. She's not out here being like, hey, I care about cancer. That's what she says, that's what her story is. No, that's not the real belief. If you go to her blog and read some of her other stuff, it's a little extreme and uh, this is what she actually believes. Now, one thing I actually thought was super cool, and I want one, is this easy Wi-Fi on and off timer. To reduce the amount of Wi-Fi being broadcasted in your home and taking over your brain, 
Um, here we have this Wi-Fi timer. I want one of these. Why? Because I'm going to set it for work time, eight hours, and then it stops, and then, uh-oh, guys, my internet's off. I can't do anything. <laughs> Oops. I actually really want one of these. Um, I have something disappointing to talk about. So I went to my local library. Shout out to local libraries. Yay! Yay! Um, and I just went and looked for Wi-Fi. I wanted some images, some fun facts for this talk, and I came across these two books. I would like to read some excerpts from them and tell you what they believe instead of me going through it. Um, but I, I'm also going to, and I doubt you can see this, if anyone can read this, like bless. Um, but there are some reviews here from Amazon about these books. So the first one, oh, that's EMF. I'll put it on this one. Um, this is Overpowered, What Science Tells Us About the Dangers of Cell Phones and Other Wi-Fi Age Devices. Uh, this is a conspiracy. So I would like to identify myself as part of the wireless industry. I know I work for an offensive security company, but I'm a Wi-Fi enthusiast, so I'd like to consider myself part of that. Um, and here is what they believe. In other words, the wireless industry has adopted a strategy of manufacturing doubt and the potential negative health effects of their products. Sadly, the strategy has a, lack, uh, has a proven track record. Doubt is our product. Since it is the best means of competing with the body of fact that exists in the minds of the general public, it also means establishing a controversy. So they believe that we're trying to push uh, wireless products just by proving doubt, saying, hey guys, uh, this is all not real, don't believe these 5G conspiracy people, creating doubt to sell product, um, which I find super offensive. The primary reason for the inaction is the meme repeatedly cited about the wireless industry. There's no conclusive proof of harm. I'm not calling it a meme. This is a very important talk, and this is not a joke. This is, uh-uh, it's not a meme. This is bullshit. Um, EMF'd. Probably worse, written by Dr. Joseph Mercola. He has a couple of different pieces of information that he says is important. This one really gets me, kind of angers me. The studies linking anxiety and depression to EMF exposure are numerous. For example, in 1994, a study found that workers exposed to broadcast radio frequencies experienced increased anxiety, social anxiety, sleeplessness, and hostility. And in 2011, a study found that high mobile phone uses among adolescents led to increase in stress, sleep disturbances, and depression. Why does that mean it's the Wi-Fi doing it? Correlation does not equal causation. Adolescents are having problems on cell phones because they're using Snapchat and Kik and TikTok, and they're just, the mental health of, of using a cell phone and social media repeatedly is not good for you. I don't have a Facebook. I have Mastodon, and I pretend to use Twitter. Um, it's Twitter. Cancer causes cell phones. <laughs> yeah, cancer causes cell phones. Um, so I, I'm kind of pissed off that we're assuming that all these ailments come from radio frequencies. There's a lot more important mitigating factors. Again, correlation does not equal causation, right? Um, and the worst part of it is they say that people can experience electromagnetic hypersensitivity syndrome, disrupted sleep, Headaches, tinnitus, <laughs> cardiac arrhythmia, skin itching, headaches, confusion, memory loss, panic attacks, dizziness, ear pain, seizures, paralysis, all caused by Wi-Fi, guys. And 5G, and 5G, and 5G. It's never loop. It's never loop. <laughs> um, they have some advice. Remember to turn off your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on your laptop and use a grounded power cord instead of a battery. Connect the internet to a grounded Ethernet plug and then use grounding adapter kits. So I was like, what's a grounding adapter kit? Um, this is where it becomes, again, a product. Um, there's a lot of money to be made here. Uh, like the Silver Shield EMF sleeping tent that Joseph put together. <laughs> Do you know what also Joseph does? He is a prolific author, a doctor. He writes, dark deception, sweet deception, the no-grain diet, effortless healing, Healthy recipes for your nutrition type. Keto fast, super fuel, fat fuel. Dude, you're a dietitian. <laughs> no qualification to write this in my opinion. All right, so what are they arguing about? Dr. Joseph Mercola and his associates are arguing about thermal effects. They also say that non-thermal effects have damage to DNA as well. Um, so that's the one 
that um, they assert and they have a lot of research for, there's about 30 pages in this book just citing other research. So I can't say they didn't do homework, but I'm saying their homework is invalid. Can we all do something for me real quick? Can you go like this? This. I just caused you all thermal damage. <laughs> Shit. Uh, <laughs> what does the FDA say about that? Um, so when I ask the question, who can you trust? I'm not saying the FDA is perfect, okay? It's not. There's a lot of flaws. But um, more importantly, in studies that we've found, there is no, um, there is a very, very low risk, if any, um, by RF in these studies. Go ahead and take the QR code here. Um, there are no controllable risk factors. In my opinion, we need to be worrying about like microplastics or something um, more than RF. One of the pieces of advice um, when reducing that SAR is to text instead of call. That's why it says someone text the FCC. SAR varies on condition. It's kind of like signal strength and the fact that it varies on condition or the weather or how you feel, um, all sorts of stuff. So uh, cell phones must meet the FCC SAR guidelines. If you look up something via its FCC ID, you can look up a SAR. Um, and uh, that, that minimum value that it has is supposed to keep you safe. The big argument here is that the 16, uh, 1.6 watts per kilogram is too high. Um, in these books, they say a SAR rating of 0 .0, 0 0.0125 is safe, which is obviously a fraction of what the FCC is saying. So is 5G able to track you? Well, the devices are, think about it. It's connected to the internet. You have no reasonable expectation of privacy, in my opinion, to say you can't know my location, but I'm gonna connect to GPS, I'm gonna connect to Wi-Fi, I'm gonna connect to all these things. Why is that? Because again, that's just not how it works. If you're not familiar, wireless access points have location data about them. Um, that's why sometimes you can get location data from Wi-Fi instead of GPS, right? Um, each wireless access point contains information about its location. Um, how do you know that? Um, you can look it up. If you don't want your wireless access point put on a map and stored for this information, you can add underscore no map to your SSID, and a lot of places like Wiggle and Cisco will take it out. Um, but in general, your, your wireless access point does give information about your location. So either you're connecting to Wi-Fi or you're connecting to your cell phone provider and you're connecting via data. Obviously, your cell phone provider has to know where you are to deliver your data. So yeah, the device is trackable. It's like, turn off your phone. Is there anyone here like, that doesn't use a cell phone? Oh, I was hoping to find one guy that was like, yeah, man, I have a flip phone. Um, I was hoping to find that. So anyway, unfortunately, that's just the brass tacks about it. I'm sorry to sound harsh, but that's the truth. Um, but 5G is not cooking your brain. It is not hacking you. It is not tracking you. It is not a government conspiracy. It's the internet. So what can we do about it? I mentioned that MAC addresses are randomized automatically in these operating systems and above. Um, it is done that through locally administrated MAC addresses. Um, you can find this on your phone. If you have, I don't know how you find it on an iPhone. If you have an Android device and you're connecting via Bluetooth, scroll all the way down, there's a MAC address and then locally assigned MAC address. That's the randomized one that's being created for your privacy. We could see here on the, the right, I don't know if y'all can see it, it says like Apple, Google, Apple, Apple, a couple different devices. Uh, Wiggle is able to determine the type of device because of the initial part of the MAC address, that organizational ID, um, that uh, describes what type of hardware it is. If that hardware device doesn't match the type of device it is, you know you're looking at the randomized MAC address. So let's revisit. Is it a conspiracy theory or is it a commercial product? Has anyone seen one of these before, these chests, these chest fair days? Okay. Um, so this was a study done by Eric Katz. I have mad respect for Eric Katz. Um, so I really suggest that you look up the, his master's thesis, which is what this was. Um, he looked at a study of many different Faraday bags. And let me just skip it all for you. This one let in one text of, I think, 60 or so. The rest of the devices had a failure rate of over half. So those Faraday products that you see, like this, uh, do not work. I want to point out some stuff that irritates me. First off, it's see-through. 
<laughs> there are holes in it. If the material somehow magically stopped everything, there are holes in it. Uh, <laughs> and it's very expensive. Um, this one's less expensive. It's a defense necklace. It's a pendant. It looks like this. It's made of copper. And that means that all the radiation is coming directly here. Forget the rest of your body, every angle possible. No, radiation only happens right here, guys. Um, we have this fabric that you can post anywhere in your house, make clothing out of, all sorts of stuff. It, I think it's itchy. Um, and then we have this. <laughs> It's like a tinfoil hat, but fashionable. <laughs> Ain't it cute, right? Also, for some reason, your face is immune. Like, you gotta protect your brain, but your face, damn. Um, so real talk, let's talk about your threat matrix here. Um, if you have a cell phone, and like I said, you want privacy, please turn it off. Um, I, there, there isn't a way to get reliable data to you without getting some information about your location and some identifying pieces of you, okay? I'm sorry. Um, turn it off. You're fine to get an implant. Uh, again, I know a guy. Um, but you can go to dangerousthings.com, look at the implants yourself, find an installer. Um, it used to happen at DEF CON. I don't think it's gonna happen anymore. Um, if you want a story about that, just come find me. But, um, you know, if you're interested, get it done. You're fine. You're not going to get tracked. Um, the NFC tag I gave you is so low risk. That's why I'm giving it out. I doubt that you're going to do anything with it. Um, you've already been in Wi-Fi positioning system spaces before. Um, so, again, when you go into a big box store, a university campus, or something like that, a hospital, and you don't want that information about your device to be kept, turn it off. Uh, also, just a good rule of thumb, do not allow automatic Wi-Fi connections on your devices. This is how rogue access points work, right? So just turn that off. And RF is literally everywhere, um, all the time, right now, through your body, in the room, at this second. So um, unless you go out to like a field, but then you still have like ISPs. So what can you do about it? This advice actually really kind of hurts me. Um, this was on the FCC's website, and uh, they say limit use, text and said, um, increase distance. This is like the same thing that these books are saying. Um, there are general guidelines, like it's not gonna hurt you to like talk on speakerphone, I guess. But um, I think it feeds into some of these fears. It's a, it's a jumping off point for people to be like, oh, look what the FCC said. They said keep it away from your body too. Um, no. Okay, so I want to respect the next speaker. Arvin, are there any cacti left? There are a few, and there are flat tags, so I guess we have a couple of minutes if you want to get one now. I don't want the speaker to, the next speaker to get any um, bothersome. But uh, questions? Yes, okay, uh, I'll get the Discord question first and then I'll get you and then a couple other people. <laughs> Uh, how do you think about the balance of surveillance and tracking based on protocol design with shifting perceptions of privacy and awareness of technology impacts? Should RF and Wi-Fi protections against tracking be on the end user or should tech designers build tech to be more private instead of requiring people to change behavior for privacy? And there's one. That's a really good question. Um, in my opinion, I would like it to be both. I would like it if tech actually did some privacy enabling features and allowed the things I said to happen that do happen, not. However, the most control that you have is on the end user. So don't wait for the tech people to figure it out. Take control of your privacy now. Yeah, and the other one you kind of answered, but uh, is there any way other than not using your phone to protect yourself against stingrays? To protect yourself against stingrays, um, yeah. So the way that works is if you have any network connection like to your ISP, your, your cell provider, whoever it is, they are able to intercept it. The best thing to do, you can't use those little Faraday bags, okay? The ones that you saw on Amazon, they do not work. Um, turn off your phone is the best solution. If you are going to text, signal. Everyone use signal, right? Yes, so um, if you are gonna do that, those will be safe. Um, those messages will not be intercepted. That's it, in the room. Any questions? Yes.
Yep. Yep. Yeah, so if you guys didn't hear him, he said that it's not just your cell phone, modern cars have cell, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, TPMS, that's the tire pressure monitoring system. Um, they can all be tracked, and if you're going to commit crime, use your friend's car. Not a lawyer. Yes. Can you get what? Yeah, the, wife, the, the installer's information, yeah. You can go to piratespiercings.com. It'll take you to his Instagram page. Where'd it go? Hold on, hold on. I, I have it somewhere. Oh my god, we're going all the way back. Which town is he in? He's in West Lafayette, Indiana, uh, but he does travel for conferences. So, where is it? Here we go. Piratespiercings.com will take you to his Instagram. It's real cool. Yes. So yeah, that's SAR rating. Yeah, so it becomes unsafe when that frequency gets into the ionizing space. That's why I showed it up there. That's the dangerous level where the actual effects can cause thermal damage and other issues. Um, yes. In my opinion, the FCC is probably at the right range. I think they're being generous enough. I don't think they're decreasing it to say like the 1.6 saw. I think that's actually pretty accurate. Um, so maybe they'll lower it in the future or raise it. But for right now, that rating is what I think is accurate. So this one, overpowered, kind of talks about that. Um, but what it has, that information again is a little suspect. Um, it asserts that if you do increase it, even past FCC, that it does become dangerous. Uh, right, don't put your head in the microwave. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I gotta go. Okay, thank you. There's one more question. Oh, okay.